I was 16, like two weeks away from my 17th birthday when I got pregnant. And I just sat in the bathroom floor and cried because there's like all my dreams, they just flush. And I knew, and my grandmother and my mom really talked to me and said that, I, you know, you're really going to have to think about it because your whole life's going to change. Everything you ever wanted to do, it's going to turn around and you're not going to be able to do it anymore. It's been this way for a while. Oklahoma has ranked among the 10 worst states for teenage pregnancy since the early 90s. New data show it hasn't gotten better. Oklahoma ranks second highest for births to 18 to 19 year olds. Only Mississippi ranks higher than us. And we're fifth in teen pregnancy overall, ages 15 to 19. So what's going on here in Oklahoma that makes teens get pregnant more often? Experts have said that one of the main problems is that nobody wants to talk about sex. Where, where are Oklahoma's children going to learn about sex? Um, it's not being taught at the level that um, we'd like to see in the schools, in the homes, in the churches. In our state, we're only one of two states uh, in the United States that does not have comprehensive health education in our schools. This is a very sensitive subject, and um, the school districts are here to teach what they are mandated to teach and um, there's you know parents want to make sure that they have a hold on what their kids hear and then that's that's expected we really do need to change the public will we need to change teen pregnancy and teen births and the discussion of sexuality as as something uh, of public will one in which it's not something that should be done at home, not something that should only be done in, as part of a moral discussion and a values discussion, but it's a public health and it's a public economic issue. More than half the girls that get pregnant while they're teenagers don't finish high school, which means more people are living under the poverty level. And 63% of those will have another kid by the time they're 20. Second thing is, is that we really do need to address this disparity and the fact that we do not have health, comprehensive health education in the schools. Let's look at that in just a little bit. Gonorrhea. It too is a bacterial infection. Annette Leon is a Tulsa Health Department specialist. She goes to area high schools and teaches a class on STDs and preventing pregnancy. She says it's not easy sometimes to get into schools. And even after she teaches a class, she knows that it's only a fraction of the students that actually need the information. Yes, it was, sometimes it's difficult to get into schools. And um, we have to be very careful, very cautious, because the school tells or dictates how far we can go, you know, what we can say, and, and we're very respectful of that. But if males are doing it, what are they called? <laughs> Macho men, right? then are you saying we're getting mixed messages from society about yeah. sex and, and what's good for us? I would dare to, rec to say to you, my friends, that it's a good idea to postpone sexual activity right now where you are in your life. Well, the kids deal. are usually yeah, very less, um, excited to be in this class. They're, they sometimes are very, you know, low-keyed when they come in, but then as we start talking, they start getting really interested. They, they want to know, how is this going to affect me? The kids are having sex. Some kids are, have decided, one young man in our class today decided, I'm, I'm having sex, you know, I'm, I'm going to. So they need to know, number one, if you're going to be engaged in sexual activity, here are some of the, the things that could happen, okay, the consequences. And then there are some kids who have decided to be abstinent they still need to know because they want to base their decision on being abstinent on something. It's not just saying no or saying no because mom said so, but they need to know what's out there. I was pregnant. I got pregnant at the end of my junior year and then had her right in the middle of my senior year in December during Christmas break. And then I did the rest of my classes on the internet and graduating was one of the, like just being there in the gown was awesome because I'd worked so hard to get through senior year and I had so much drama and that's when that's when I lost a lot of friends 
What Sidney Jones did that was incredible was finish high school and have a baby in the same senior year. A lot of kids would have given up in her situation. Margaret Hudson is a school that gives help to kids like Sydney, so that they don't have to go to public school and try to raise a kid at the same time. We've been in the Oklahoma community for 42 years now, and what we do is we provide services for pregnant and parenting teens and their families. A teen that has become pregnant as, oh, well, she deserved it, she's fast, she's out there, she's promiscuous, um, and that's really not always the case. A lot of these young ladies have just given in to um, peer pressure, a lot of them uh, see what's being shown in the media from, from the movies to the commercials, but they don't see the work that it takes after you, your lights, camera, and action is off and really being a real mom. I think girls don't realize how hard it is until you have your baby, and when you have it, it's like, wow, he's here or she's here, and it's how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? It's really, once you hold your baby, it's really scary because you're like, wow, I don't know what I'm going to do, that kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't have gone back to school if it wasn't because of Margaret Hudson because you just uh, I would have left it. I gave up last year. I was, I like gave up because before I came here, I didn't want to come because, you know, I thought, oh, you know, it's going to be the same like the other schools, but no, I'm here every day. I've been here every day since this is my second year here, and I really love it. Omari Ogisi leads a program created by the Oklahoma Health Equity Initiative in Tulsa's Planned Parenthood. It's called the Youth Empowerment Initiative Peer Group. It's about 10 high school college students who receive the latest health information and training and are expected to spread the message. Yeah, you're supposed to read all of that. That's a lot to read to try to hold somebody's attention. There are many ways to decrease your risk of for pregnancy and STIs. Name three of them. The use of a condom. Mm -hmm. or, uh, abstinence. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, just, just as with adults, everybody is more comfortable um, talking to their peers. And, you know... I, I always, you know, stress that teenagers talk to their parents because I do teen education um, outside of this as well. But um, I always get parents or even teachers that call me and say it's always good if they hear it from someone else. And a lot of times we get this information from our friends, but our friends are not um, educated with the right stuff. So we come out with stuff like if you drink Mountain Dew, you won't get pregnant. Is that like a real... Yes. <laughs> a lot of teenagers think that. Well, if guys think, drink Mountain Dew, it kills their sperm. So, you know, I'll just chug a six-pack and I'll be okay. Most of the experts agree that the issue of teen pregnancy won't go away until we start talking more about it.